Every player that's ever been drafted in the NBA has had a dream of winning an NBA title. We've seen greats such as Karl Malone, John Stockton, Charles Barkley, Steve Nash, Yao Ming, Reggie Miller, and a lot of others that were never able to win a ring for one reason or another. Now in this video I'm going to talk about 5 current NBA players that I believe will retire without a ring. At number 5 I have Russell Westbrook. Don't get me wrong, Westbrook is definitely one of my favorite players in the NBA and he's super fun to watch. Regardless of the entire NBA calling Westbrook a stat patter, I feel like he doesn't get enough credit for the stats that he puts up. The dude literally averaged a triple double for 3 seasons straight. Regardless of the stats he's been able to put up, it's hard to look past the fact that he's been knocked out of the first round in the playoffs for the past 3 years. He's often the reason they either win or lose. One thing I'm willing to acknowledge about Westbrook is he's sort of a ball hog. At the end of games, he'll often take a bad shot or make a bad pass that'll end up making his team lose the game. I don't think Russ could be the first or second option on a championship contending team as he's not really trustworthy late in games. I think one of the more interesting topics surrounding Westbrook is how some of his former teammates turned into much better players when they left OKC. Victor Oladipo, James Harden, Kevin Durant. These are all great players that are known throughout the league. I'm sure you can even throw some bonus in there, the dude went from averaging 5 points to 14 points in a year or two, and looked like a beast this year on the Pacers. Now coming in at number 4, I decided to put James Harden. Even though Harden went literally brain dead this season, averaging 36 points per game and most likely being the MVP of the league, I just feel like the type of offense that the Rockets run is not sustainable. The offense mainly revolves around Harden iso ball in the entire game and one guy touching the ball. This often leads to very little ball movement and a lot less opportunities for his teammates. I think he, I'm not a fan of in terms of winning championships. I don't think that style is ever going to win championships. But at the same time, you have to keep your team's head above water to win games. So you have to do what you have to do to win games. And he's doing that. So are you saying you don't think James Harden and the Rockets, as constructed, can win a title? Not with this style of play, it won't win. Right, with one player dominating the ball. As dumb as this sounds, the key to the Rockets making a deep playoff run is his teammates making shots. When the Bucks played the Rockets this year, they used an interesting strategy to stop Harden from getting his famous step back three. They would have a defender literally sitting on his left hip so he couldn't get that step back three and give him a wide open lane to the hoop. Once Harden drove, the help defense would pick him up and he'd kick it out to an open teammate but they just literally couldn't hit open shots. In this year's playoffs, I could see teams using this exact same strategy to stop the Rockets. Unless a miracle happens this year and the Rockets somehow beat the Warriors, I just don't see Harden ever winning a ring. Jimmy Butler After getting picked up at number 30 in the draft by the Bulls, he turned into a 4 time All-Star. Even though he had a great few years in Chicago, he slowly got the label as a toxic teammate. After getting traded from the Chicago Bulls to the Timberwolves, it became apparent why he got this label. From the jump, it was clear that Jimmy didn't mesh well with the younger players in Towns and Wiggins. After requesting a trade from the Timberwolves, he didn't go to practice for an entire month. When he finally returned to practice, he had an altercation with the younger players. To prove a point that the Timberwolves need him more than he needs them, he beat the starters with the third stringers. After that, he called out the younger players saying they ain't shit and they soft. He literally said this to his own teammates. In my opinion, this doesn't sound like a guy I'd want to play with. Regardless of his past issues with his teammates, he's now in one of the best positions he's ever been in to win an NBA title. The 76ers currently have one of the best rosters in the NBA, but even with that, they were only able to get the third seed. If I'm being real, I honestly don't see the Sixers winning a title this year. The only problem with Jimmy right now is this summer he's a pending free agent. It honestly wouldn't surprise me if Jimmy ended up signing with a team like the Knicks or maybe the Lakers. Being on a team with a lot of great players is good and all, but at the end of the day, some players just want to get paid. And if the 76ers offer Tobias Harris and Max over Jimmy Butler, best believe he's leaving. Derrick Rose I think Derrick Rose is one of those players that's hated by literally nobody. As I'm sure we all know, after being picked first in the 2011 NBA Draft, Derrick Rose ended up being one of the youngest MVPs in NBA history. Remember the days D. Rose was known as the Windy City Assassin and the only player that could stop LeBron? Yeah, those days are over. Constant injury really ate up most of D. Rose's career as he's a guard that mainly relies on his athleticism and his speed to score. After that 2016 season he had in New York, his career kind of went downhill. But it's nice to see what he's been able to do in Minnesota this year. He was able to average 18 on the season and honestly, I don't think anybody's going to forget the game he dropped 50 on Utah. It was almost like we were looking into the past and seeing what he could have been. 
It's crazy to think that he's already 30 years old and he's already entering the final years of his career. With his current situation in Minnesota, he literally has zero chance of getting a ring. I really hope he signs with a team like the Bucks so he can at least have a chance to get a ring before he retires. DeMar DeRozan DeMar is just one of those players you feel bad for. He got completely blindsided by his own organization when they traded him for Kawhi. I could honestly see why they did trade him because he usually disappeared in the playoffs. But this year when he's on the Spurs, it's a different story. I honestly wouldn't be surprised at all if the Spurs end up making a deep playoff run. I could see him beating the Nuggets and end up beating the Trailblazers. I could honestly see him winning a game or two against the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals, but obviously I don't see them winning at all. He's in a weird situation where he's on a good team with a good coach, but it's just not good enough. Unless the Spurs manage to get a good free agent, I just don't see this team really going anywhere. Now with all that being said, I honestly hope these players prove me wrong. Every guy that I mentioned in this video has all the talent in the world that they need to win a title. But at the end of the day, I feel like it all comes down to being in the right situation at the right time. With both Jimmy and DeMar both being 29 years old and entering the final years of their prime, I feel like it's time for them to at least chase rings and not chase the money. They definitely don't want to go down as great players that were never able to win a ring. If you happen to make it this far in the video, I just want to thank you for watching. This is my first time making a video like this and honestly I had a lot of fun making it. If you want more content, make sure to follow my Instagram at CrossSports and subscribe to the YouTube as I'm going to be pumping out more content soon. And with that, I'm out.